back. Let's talk about mission, and it's brought to you by the Star Ghana Foundation with the funding from Danida UK and the European Union. But Ayeyi is a little girl of a special kind. She has, she had the thoughts and desire to meet the First Lady, Her Excellency Rebecca Kufuado. She was uncovered by TV3's Portia Gabo. Take a look at the story. When we're done, we'll have a conversation with UNICEF's Education Officer, Mrs. Rhoda Angel. Stay with us. Who is the perfect girl? Oh, who is the perfect girl? Perfect girl, I'm the perfect girl. Who say that? Hello, Mama Rebecca. Please, I want to meet you. Please help OIF Ghana to help my brothers and sisters who have my condition. Thank you. On Sunday, May 19, 2019, TV3 aired the inspiring story of seven-year-old Ayeyi Yadombwache, who despite living with osteogenesis imperfecta, had a positive outlook in life. Her story went viral and inspired many the world over. Two weeks after the story aired, it caught the attention of Ghana's first lady, Rebecca Ekufado, who invited Ayeyi over to her office for a discussion on her condition. Ayeyi and her family were met on arrival by the Minister of Gender, Children and Social Protection, Cynthia Morrison and her deputy. There's the official office of the first lady. And you want to see her, let's go and see them. Then the moment Ayeyi had been waiting for arrived. Ghana's first lady, Rebecca Kufado, was excited to finally meet Ayeyi. I found I found Ayeyi on the on the video very very um, upbeat and very lively and uh, uh, articulate. And um, you know, I was very impressed with her. I must say, I was touched when, towards the end, I heard, "Oh, she'd like to meet the first lady," and um, I said, "Yes, for sure, we must meet." And uh, so here we are today, and um, I'm here to be a friend to her. First of all, Grandma, like she called me, and uh, and also be a friend and to do whatever it is that um, I can do to, to help. Ayeyi's mother, Justina Yadombwachi, explained Ayeyi's condition to the first lady. The bones are brittle and can break easily. She can cough and break a bone. She can turn and break. She, I mean, any part of her body that has bones can break. Um, it's, it's been a very tiring journey, especially looking at this side of the continent where little knowledge about this condition is known. We had to do a lot of trial and errors, especially at, at um, the first three years. The arms have not been worked on, so that's how come it's curved like that. That was how the legs too used to be, yes, and it was worked 
Osteogenesis imperfecta, also known as brittle bone disease, is a group of genetic disorders that mainly affects the bones. It affects 1 in 15,000 people. In Ghana, little is known about the disease as there's no treatment center. Persons living with the condition usually buy medication from the United States of America and the United Kingdom, which costs over 1,000 cities. First Lady Rebecca Kufado pledged to support Ayeyi and the Osteogenesis Imperfecta Foundation Ghana. But we'll try and uh, do something, a little we can. I'll make sure I do my best. Ayeyi, I'll make sure I do my best, okay? All right. So you brought up an amazing, wonderful daughter. Mm -hmm. And I know that God did not make a mistake by giving her to you. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you have so much compassion and love for her, God is going to bless you. You have, me. You have to come back and visit me. Yeah. I look forward to seeing you again. Be a good girl, listen to mommy and daddy, um, listen to what they say, so you don't hurt yourself. Okay? Take care and God bless you. Ayeyi's family were grateful to the first lady for the gesture. She is meant to go very far to impact lives, especially people who are just like her. If you are a, a mother who uh, happen to have a child with a condition, don't give up. And I still maintain that we don't ever give up. It's never been easy, but at least we have seen that our effort of raising a child with brittle bone has not been in vain. Thank you, Ghana. Thank you for the support. Aye is hopeful her story will continue to inspire children living with special needs in Ghana. Thank you very much. Thank you for all the support. And thank you so much. Porsche Gabo, TV3 News, Accra. Kind-hearted First Lady, ambitious Ayeyi, brought out by Porsche Gabo. I've been joined in studio by Mrs. Rhoda Angel. She's the education officer at the uh, UNICEF here in Accra. Now, this conversation is made possible by Star Ghana Foundation with funding from the Danida, UK8, and the European Union. Welcome, Madam. Thank you very much for your time. What are your pleasure. immediate thoughts about what we just saw? She has brittle bones. She's not backing down. And she gets to meet the First Lady. What are your thoughts? Um, before I say anything, Johnny, let me first say a very special good morning to our children, mm -hmm. including those with special needs yeah. who are sitting for their BEC mm -hmm. this week. Mm -hmm. um, on behalf of the entire UNICEF family, we would like to wish them the very best in okay. their examination, mm -hmm. and we hope that they will be successful so that they can transition to senior high school. Absolutely. Yes. And then on the story of Onayeyi is a very inspirational story and um, this is why UNICEF is working closely with government to ensure that every child who um, is given birth to in this world, their right to education, mm -hmm. their right to health and nutrition, their right to protection is being fulfilled. And um, UNICEF is particularly excited about the story mm -hmm. that the media is trying to project okay. to show that once a person has a disability, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean mm -hmm. that that child or that person cannot achieve their potential in life. What, what kind of signal should the ministries, department and agencies pick from this in terms of inclusive education and how they place the needs of persons with disability on the front burner? As a first step, um, UNICEF has worked closely with government mm -hmm. um, to develop the inclusive education policy, mm -hmm. which has been launched. And, and as part of that policy, mm -hmm. the policy states that every child, whether they have disability or not, whether they are a boy or a girl, mm -hmm. whether they are coming from a very poor background, their right to education should be fulfilled. Right. And so as a first step... Do you see that happening here? Yes. Um, um, the policy has been developed mm -hmm. and in fact if you look at the sub-Saharan Africa Ghana is making strides in terms of implementation of the but policy. I, I struggle to see the strides because we keep talking about inclusive education for example the assessment centers for uh, children with cerebral palsy 
uh, is almost non-existent. I mean, they'll have to travel miles and miles to go and get assessment. Look at our basic schools, for example. I mean, for BEC, uh, I don't see the, the inclusion S happening. So inclusive education is still in evolving in the country, but as a first step, certain measures has been put in place to ensure that at least all children with special needs are included in the education system. Okay. For example, there's been a lot of sensitization mm. to create awareness to tell parents that mm. yes, you do not need to keep these kids in the mm. house, in your homes, you don't need to hide them, but you need to bring them out, take mm. them to school, because the teachers there have also been trained to include these children to progress in, in, in learning. In, in the particular and case of Ayeyi, mm -hmm. uh, she was homeschooled uh, because well, her parents could afford it. What, what will be the, the prospect of other children who may have a condition, but their parents don't belong to the bourgeois class, they are proletariate, and so they will have to take them to a public school mm -hmm. that does not necessarily have the need of care for people like them? Well, Johnny, fortunately for us, at least I, um, with, the, with the coming of the policy, mm -hmm. a lot of sensitization has been done. Beyond that. But, but um, a lot of sensitization has been done by the government, complemented by efforts of the Ghana Federation of Disabilities right, Organization, right. which is the umbrella Absolutely. organization right. for all the disability movements. Mm -hmm. And they are going into communities, they are telling parents that yes, the education system is now accepting all children mm -hmm. because now there is a policy in place. And so no teacher or no school can deny a child with special needs they are right to education. Mm -hmm. And of course, once they get to the school, the teacher's capacity have also been um, built mm -hmm. to support these children to be part of the teaching and learning process. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm asking this question mm -hmm. because I've traveled around the country. Mm -hmm. uh, I engage communities a lot about some, some of these things. And you find that, look, even within this enclave, with the presidential enclave, all the basic schools do not have a special classroom for, for special children. And that is so, what we are trying so, to so run that, away from. So that, well, we're, we're running away Yet from it. We don't want to have a special class mm. for these kids. We want to include them. include them. We want to build an inclusive but, society. But, they, but you see, they have but special what, needs. If we sit in a class, like the school you and I went to, yes. and the teacher puts a question, do you understand that we all sing the chorus, yes, sir, or no, sir, that single child who has special needs, who may say no, sir, will Everybody will think, God, oh, you're trying to pull us back. Johnny, that is why we, are, we need inclusive education. Mm. Inclusive education is about quality education right. for all children. Mm. Quality education means that as a teacher, when you come to a class, mm. you need to be able to identify the diverse needs of the kids in your class okay. and then be able to provide the needed support mm. to address the diverse needs in your class. Mm. It's not about one child, two child understanding what what you have thought, mm -hmm. but ensuring that every Everybody. child in mm -hmm. the class, and it starts from you being the teacher, being able to identify the needs of that child mm -hmm. in your class, mm -hmm. and then you can be able to provide that support mm -hmm. that the child needs to be part mm -hmm. of the teaching. There's and a lady process. called Matilda Agbenyega, who was also uh, you know, brought to the fore by Portia Gabo. Yeah. She, she sat for a BEC Portia brought her up, and then she went to West African Secondary School. Mm -hmm. She sat for her SSE recently. Yeah. But in spite of this conversation we're having yeah. and the policy document being available, a common software was not available for her to be able to write the exam properly. So she was even disadvantaged before the exam started. That is a problem, isn't so, it? So, Johnny, I said that inclusive education in Ghana is evolving. How long we must are still, we wait? We are still, How long must we wait? We are not waiting, but at least some steps have been taken. This, to, this is a to, software we're talking yes. about. And it isn't as if her story is hidden, because we brought up the story uh, when she was JHS before her BEC. She's gone through one, two, three years of school, mm. and that single software mm. couldn't be provided by the West African Education Council. That's problematic. Uh, Johnny, that is why we need all stakeholders to come on board. Inclusive education implementation, you realize from even IAE's story mm -hmm. that just the environment, the right attitude of the parents mm -hmm. within the home 
is helping Aie to right. become that confident, mm. articulate young girl. True. And so it means that, yes, all of us, we need to come on board. Mm. I know Ghana Education Service is working very hard, especially the special education, to ensure that this software, mm. which um, children Matilda like Matilda would mm. need, is available for all children who have that condition. But it is not available so it's, it's, it's work in progress, and I know mm. they are working hard to do, make do it you, available. You, your outfit yeah. votes a lot of funds. Uh, UNICEF votes a lot of funds to, to help some of these costs. Do you think that the money has been put to good use? For, for what we have seen in okay. terms of at least the demonstration we have done regards to implementation of inclusive mm. education, we think that as a country, if this is the way we all accept and agree mm. to go, mm. it will go a long way to help our children, especially those with special needs, is, is to be part of good use. We have seen good results. good results. We have seen good results. At least, if for nothing at all, the attitude of people are changing mm. towards these children mm. with special needs. In the quite few demonstrations we have done, we've noticed that parents are now sending their mm. kids to school. Mm. We are also seeing that even within the school environment, you know, sometimes your peers could um, result to bullying and teasing mm -hmm. but all these attitudes are changing in terms of capacity building which we have also um, supported government to do okay. teachers are now well abreast mm -hmm. with the concept of inclusive education okay. and they are supporting the kids again even at the pre tertiary mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. we have also worked with government to ensure that the curriculum um, framework which is currently um, being developed for the colleges of education mm -hmm. also addresses issues of inclusion and gender so that by the time a teacher even comes to the classroom they are well abreast with all these issues and they will be there to provide that support that children like Aie would need. Aie is purposeful, she is inspirational, she, she makes you understand that her disability is not her inability yeah. and that's one key trait that a lot of persons with disability lack in, in this country if you ask me. What will make them feel little of themselves? And what are we doing to make sure that they feel special like IAE and feel I'll, energized? I will look at the going forward, what we need to do okay. to help children like IAE. For example, as UNICEF, um, we also are engaging with Ghana Federation for Disability Organization. Okay. As I mentioned mm. earlier, mm. it's the umbrella organization of persons with disability movement in okay. the country. Mm. And so we are using persons with disabilities mm. as role models okay. to go into the society to mm. say that, yes, I have a disability, okay. but because mm. I have ensured that I am educated, I have reached this level, mm. and so as parents, you also have an obligation to ensure that your children come out, they go to school, so that their potentials are realized mm. at the end of it. Let, let's backtrack a bit. So let's look at a practical classroom. You're talking about demonstration, a practical classroom of, say, 40 children, um, and maybe two of them, one has cerebral palsy, the other has another <coughs> condition. So it puts them in a position of disadvantage. Mm. There's a teacher in the class who has 40 minutes to run the period. Um, and you say that the focus should be on these special ones uh, and make sure that they also come along the class? Exactly, because if you look at the Sustainable Development Goal 4, it talks about we giving quality, inclusive education. But of course, the methods will meaning be different that, from, from how you educate yes, these ones. Meaning from, that, mm. yes, every child in your class should be part of the teaching learning okay. process. We can understand that it's not all rosy. Mm. There are challenges which, I mean, it's present in the country mm. that we all know that, for example, large class sizes mm. may affect. But of course, we know that the Ghana Education Service is also working very hard with the district and with the schools mm. to ensure that they have resource teachers. These teachers are teachers who have specialized in special education, okay. so they get posted do to the district. Do they have them as we speak? I mean, if you yes, look at the quantum, do. if you look at the they quantum. They do, but it's not it.
enough okay. and so we need to encourage a lot more people to mm. go in to offer some of these courses mm. so that we have enough of this teaching force to support said children in the schools I see. and in the Thank you very much. We're wrapping up. If you have closing thoughts, let's share them. So. Yes, yeah, so um, Johnny, what I'll say is um, the work is huge. Mm. Um, we can't leave it for one person to do it. All stakeholders, parents, and even the media especially. I was very excited to see you projecting this very positive story about a child who has a disability but is so confident and dynamic. Mm. And if the child gets that support she needs, she'll be able to achieve her potential. So I'll encourage all stakeholders to mm. embrace mm. the inclusive education policy right. and support the government to be able to implement so that at mm. the end of the day, we do not leave any child behind. Thank you very much. Grateful for your time. That's Thank Mrs. You. Rhoda Angel. She is the education officer at the United Nations uh, uh, International Children Fund for Education. Well, UNICEF, that's what I call it. Thank you very much for watching.